<laughs> I'm laughing. I am definitely laughing because I keep screwing up this intro. And I'm going to get it this time. Today's show is a bit of a ramble. It's going to go in a lot of different places. And while it is about analog, I'm going to start with something that is uh, format agnostic. I want to hear about the music that changed your life, presumably when you were young, uh, that up to that point, you were a casual listener. It was nice. It was there. But you heard this album or this single and something you connected with this music in a bigger, deeper, more powerful way. And I want to hear about that in the comments below. For example, my music that changed my life was, well, it's an embarrassingly easy choice for me. And that was the first Beatles album, Meet the Beatles, the U.S. first Beatles album. And it's still important to me. And that's part of this, the qualification to be included in this story in your comments. I would appreciate it if it was music that changed you then and still is very, very important to you. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's a CD or a file, whatever, I don't care. It's about the music. Now, as for the equipment reviews in today's show, there are two. An affordable turntable, the Technics SL100C, $995, including the cartridge. And then a, another review of just a cartridge, a high-end cartridge, the EMT TSD MRB moving coil cartridge. It is $2,495. It's handcrafted in Switzerland. Oh, I almost screwed up. Yep, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. So as for the Techniques turntable, it is, but of course, a direct drive turntable. So that's what Techniques does, right? And I have personally been pretty much settled in a belt drive turntable mode for my entire audiophile life, <laughs> pretty much. So many belt drive turntables. And then I reviewed a Techniques turntable, a direct drive turntable, actually the 1500C, and it, and it connected with me in a different way. And I thought, wow. And then I reviewed another Techniques turntable and another Techniques turntable, and I wound up buying a Techniques SL1200G. And that is now my reference turntable. That's powerful. For me, it was a really big deal. So when this revision came along, the SL100C, it's like, yeah. I want, to, I want to know about this. So it includes a moving magnet cartridge, an Audio-Technica 95C. And I also used it, by the way, the Techniques, with a Grado cartridge, which is $400 high output cartridge, just to have some contrast to the Audio-Technica. But as for the turntable itself, well, let's see. I guess the closest one it's similar to the Technics has been making for a while is that 1500C. But that 1500C has a built-in uh, moving magnet phono section. And this new one, the 100C, does not. The 1500C came with an Ortofon 2M red cartridge, moving magnet cartridge. This one comes with a less expensive cartridge, this Audio-Technica. One really nice feature, for some of us at least, is the auto lift feature which means at the end of the side of the record, the arm automatically raises up out of the groove. Or you can turn off that feature as I use it and just use it manually. And I went over and lifted the arm out of the groove at the end of the record. I've been doing that for oh, you know, over half a century. Why change now? But if you want to sit in the chair and not get up at the end of the record, you can go with the auto lift feature. So as for more features, it does come with a dust cover, a hinged dust cover. And it has a two-year warranty. It has, oh, RCA jacks on the back, so you can use any inter interconnect cable with this turntable. And as I said, it does not have a built-in phono preamp. Let's see. It is designed in Japan, but made in Malaysia. The warranty runs to two years. And this turntable, as far as I can tell, is only sold direct by Amazon and also techniques.com. It's super easy to set up. The cartridge comes pre-mounted in a head shell. Uh, adjusting the stylus tracking force is very easy. You read the manual, 
really, you don't have to have any previous experience with turntables to figure out how to use and really enjoy this turntable. Now, it, as I said, it doesn't have a built-in phono preamp. I used this MoFi uh, phono preamplifier designed by the late, great Tim DeParavicini. Now, unfortunately, I did not have another $1,000 turntable just sitting around that I could compare this one to. But about, let's say, a month or so ago, I did review the U-Turn uh, Orbit Theory belt drive turntable. Now, that's a more traditional design with a belt drive. Magnesium tone arm, really nice, solid wood plinth. Um, and, I and I really like that turntable. But if memory serves, that turntable was a little leaner sounding, less warm sounding, very detailed, very clear, a fun turntable to use, but the Techniques turntable has a more solidity to the sound. Let's put it that way. It has more meat on the bones by comparison, <laughs> without actually doing the comparison. But it's recent enough, I feel pretty sure, that's how these two turntables differ sonically. I, you know, I just want to take a, a second to explain my process for reviewing turntables and cartridges. It's, it's different. It feels different than reviewing a speaker or an amplifier. And well, I play a lot of records, and I'm just absorbing the sound, taking notes here and there, but it feels different. It's a different thing for me. But anyway, to get down to nitty gritty with the 100C, I put this one on. This Gudrun gut record is called I Put a Record On. So it seemed like a good place to start to, t to tell you about. And well, <clears throat> she's German. This is kind of uh, techno electronica. But it has soul. She just puts more into this music and has a lot of deep bass. And I was amazed by how much was coming out of the Kef LS50 speakers. Um, the room was definitely energized. And the texture and the palpability and all those things that are happening in the music, really, really strong. Now, I was using the Audio-Technica cartridge, good starter cartridge, but I was curious what if I changed over to a better cartridge, in this case, the Grado Reference Platinum, what would, what would that do? And it just amplified the sound. It sounded more powerful. The beats were deeper. The textures were stronger. The dynamics were stronger. It just felt more alive and more present. The sound stage expanded. The space was bigger and deeper. Pretty much everything got better. Now, it's a $400 cartridge, so you would expect those kind of differences. But in essence, the turntable is, let's call it the transport for the cartridge. <laughs> That's what was going on. So I, I felt really good. Now, I was using, I think I mentioned this, the MoFi Studio Phono uh, preamplifier, Phono preamplifier. Things were going really, really well. And then I played this Roxy Music record. Now, Roxy Music, I like Roxy Music, but this particular album, Manifesto, is not, the, not my go-to Roxy. And yet, I was having this same kind of feeling that the music felt great. It felt alive. Brian Ferry was so, um, I think he was in his Eno mode or something. He, it, just, it kind of felt like an Eno record in a way. But the guitarist, uh, Manzara, wow. He is so inventive that there's twists and turns to his playing. It's not like a standard rock guitar sound. Anyway, I'm going along. Things are going really well. Switching between the two cartridges, because I did, I, I wanted to hear the, the turntable as you would when you buy it with the Audio Technica. And I felt it's a very competent sound, but the turntable really shows off the differences between cartridges. And then I played this Van Morrison record. Now it's called Too Late to Stop Now. It's his first live album. And you know what? It's his best live album, I think. He has a big band, uh, with horn players and string players, and the arrangements are fantastic. And he sounds like he's into it. Now I saw Van Morrison a number of times. And you know what? He was usually a disappointment. He, he wasn't comfortable on stage. He had some kind of stage fright or something. He really did. Um, but here, he's definitely in it. So, you know, at this point, I decided to take the Van Morrison record, bring it over to the Technics SL1200G, my reference turntable, and play 
the EMT cartridge with the same record I just heard on the 100C. And the sound was, it sounded like a better performance. That's the best way to put it. It felt like Van was even more into it, more energized. The band just, a fresher take. It, it didn't sound like a remastered record. It sounded like a better version musically of what I was getting off the 100C. The, the liveness of the sound was, was enhanced. I could hear more of that. I could hear more of the room. I could hear more of the audience. I was feeling more information coming off the groove, but that's like an audiophile cliche. This is more about the performance was better. It was a fresher take on the music. That was a great place to start with the EMT. Now, as, as I mentioned earlier, the EMT is made in Switzerland, it's handcrafted in Switzerland. And this is just the, well, I would call it the entry level. This is one of EMT's least expensive cartridges. It is a uh, basically a cartridge and head shell as one. So <laughs> there's no, you don't mount this cartridge on a head shell. It comes all in one piece. And it is, I think, basically solid magnesium. It has a boron cantilever, a special style of shape. I'm going to put up the specifications for the EMT right now. And, and by the way, below in the description box, I'll have the complete system I use for the 100C review and also for the EMT review. They're all right down there below this video. So, you know, I decided for this review of the EMT that I wasn't going to cherry pick only great sounding records. To, you know, I was going to play Dark Side of the Moon or Steely Dan and that, that kind of stuff. And I played this one, Nuggets. This is a, a collection of you know, hit singles from the 1960s of like garage bands and stuff like that. And this track, uh, The Seeds Pushing Too Hard, which has fuzzed out guitars, it's definitely not an audiophile recording, but you know what happened? Suddenly, I was 16 again. <laughs> I felt like this connection to the music and I'm pound, as if I was like in a car and pounding my fists against the dashboard or something. I was connected to the music. And as I play, you know, other records with the EMT, I'm thinking about Koetsu. I'm thinking there's something about that this is doing that the Koetsu did. Now, I had a Koetsu Yurushi Blue Sky, or Sky Blue, whatever, a few years ago, and I love that cartridge. It did something that it made every record sound better than it should. And I felt that way about this EMT. It just told me more about the music. And it was kind of like that with that Van Morrison record that the EMT brought him out as a musician, as a performer, as a singer, that I just felt more from him with the EMT riding the grooves. To do a comparison, I pulled out my Dynavector XX2 moving coil cartridge. It's about the same price as the EMT. And the Dynavector definitely is a brighter sounding cartridge, more transparent, a drum sounded crisper. There was a sparkle to the sound coming off the XX2 that the EMT did not have. But the EMT had more weight to the sound, more pulse to it, more thrust to the rhythms. Um, I felt that the imaging was more spacious, it was more open sounding, and yet individual sound, individual instruments within the sound stage were more individual. The separation between them was, was better through the EMT. But it was the tonality. It just had a richer, more powerful, yeah, that's it, a more powerful sound than the XX2. And one other comparison I did real fast was the Ortofon SPU number no. one moving coil cartridge. And that one was, softer, softer than the EMT, plumper, richer, fuller, but definitely uh, less lively, less dynamically agile than the EMT. I really like the SPU. It's a very relaxing, involving cartridge, but the EMT takes the sound, the, the excitement, the, uh, what the musicians are putting into the music. You just feel it more with the EMT. Okay, so now I'm going to do, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the Technics SL100C direct drive turntable 
and the EMT TSD MRV moving coil cartridge. Well, the 100C, well, it's the right turntable. It's the right turntable for someone who's serious about getting the best out of their analog without spending an insane amount of money. It feels right. It's a joy to use. Um, you know, it's not fussy. I mean, some turntables, really nice ones, they still like, you gotta tweak them and futz around with them to get them to sound their best. And not, not this one, it just, it just works. As for the EMT TSD MRB, well, <laughs> I, like I say, I'm amazed that it's taken me this long to hear the sound of EMT cartridges. And as soon as I did, I felt like, yeah, this is yet another way of hearing music. Every cartridge has its own sound signature. And this one, it's a combination of its tone. Yes, it's I don't think I stress this enough. It's a very natural, full-bodied tone and still has an incredible amount of clarity and detail, especially when it comes to pulling spatial information from the grooves. You hear into the music. It does that so well. It also tracks really well. I, shouldn't have, I should have also mentioned that. I am really fascinated by the sound of this cartridge because I never heard anything quite like it. Yeah, that's it. So I think it's going to be sticking around here. Anyway, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, this one comes from Jose. He sends greetings from the warm Caribbean shores of the Dominican Republic. He's a big fan of the channel. Thanks, Jose. Anyway, this is his system. He has a Krell Digital Vanguard integrated amplifier running Ariel 5T stand mount speakers. They are supported by a Rel T5i subwoofer. The turntable is a Kuzma Stabi S with a Stogie tone arm and Soundsmith Zephyr cartridge. Uh, that's running into a Gold Note PH10 phono stage. For digital, there's a MyTech Brooklyn Bridge DAC with the S Booster Linear Power Supply. Now the furniture is custom made by Palo Margo, a local woodworking shop with integrated cable trays and cooling fans. Nice going, Jose. <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true, I am the Audiophiliac, and I'm so glad you're here. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Uh, that is the best way, the absolute best way of supporting the channel, and Patreon now accepts payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. That's, you don't want to go quite that far, that's cool. You could always just hit the like button on the videos that you like. And I think if you watch this far into today's video, you probably really like it. So hit that button. And if you have yet to subscribe, please do so. Oh, one other bit of information. I have a new playlist. Unfortunately, it's just for a uh, Cobuzz, but I will link to it below. Uh, and it's really long. It's almost, what is it, like four and a half hours, five hours of my favorite music of the last few months all jammed in together in this one playlist. So if you have Cobuzz, check it out. Someday I'll figure out how to also put it on other platforms. But for now, it's Cobuzz only. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Oh, and the, and the playlist will be linked to in the description, by the way. Yeah, so my, my work here is at last complete. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.